This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Spring is here, and that means patio beers. Kick off the spring season with a house beer bucket for you and your whole crew. Five refreshing 16-ounce beers for $15. It don't get much better than that. Use promo code TABOO at any Illegal Pete's location to score yourself a free house beer with the purchase of an entree. Promo code is valid for in-store and online orders. Test out the signature Illegal Pete's house beer for free before you grab yourself a whole bucket. Illegal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. And yeah, y'all, go get that free beer uh, this month of May, man. Uh, get it while you can. What's good, y'all? Welcome this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. Welcome this week's episode of the podcast. Hope y'all having a great week, and I appreciate y'all being here, man. I really do. Because we have a fucking incredible guest today. One of my favorite guests on the show, in the show's history. Before I introduce this guest, I just got to say, this weekend, I will be at Summer Camp music festival on friday and then on sunday i will be at sunset music festival man one of the biggest weekends i've ever had as a uh, taboo and dude i have so much new music to play dude i literally just got done exporting a brand new one that i'm gonna play for the first time at summer camp and uh dude i'm jacked up on this weekend man. i couldn't be more stoked but enough about me dude today is about the amazing guest i have all right, he's been on the show before. We did it probably like three years ago on Zoom, but I wanted to have him in studio, sit down in person, and just have that connection. And, dude, I'm so glad we did it. This is one of my favorite episodes, dude. This guy is a phenomenal producer, uh, really creative man. He does a lot of really awesome video stuff on the Internet. There's a lot of really great parties and just really cares about the community and giving back to it, dude. His story is one of the most inspiring ones. I mean, after this episode, dude, I left – Ready to run through a fucking wall, dog. This guy got me pumped up. And if this guy don't get you pumped up, bro, you better check yourself, dude, because I, I love this dude. He's a great friend, amazing guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenga. My man. Mitch. Yeah, Pat. I love this setup, dude. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> way better than the Zoom days, bro. Dude, way better. Well, yeah. there's like a chemistry when you're like sitting. Uh-huh. Like like uh, the last time we were doing it, I remember just like talk. Okay, you talk now. Okay, now I'll talk. Yeah. Okay, now you talk. And then we like step on each other. It just feels weird. Yeah. So this is fucking sick. This dude. is better. And we got Kyle back there. And Kyle it brings so much to this show, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Kyle Is Brown. Kyle like the Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I don't know what all Jamie does, but I, so he might be, Jamie might be better. I don't know what all he does. Might be. <laughs> that boy is way better, man. <laughs> yeah. Probably got a degree in it. Probably. He's been doing it for a yeah. while. <laughs> you got your own mic. I fucking love it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> We're professional over here, bro. Love it, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Seriously. Dude, thanks for coming yeah. back on, dude. Yeah. I just wanted to co finally come check out your place, too. It's like everybody lives in Denver now. It's wild. It's cool. Yeah, but, like, if you live in Denver, it's probably better to hang occasionally. You yeah. Know? I feel like I'm in my apartment all the time, so. Dude, I feel you, bro. Like, I went out to your show last week, and I was like, I was at Cervantes, and I was like, is this the first time I've gone to Cervantes this year? Damn. I couldn't, I didn't know if I have or not. What is the, what month is it? It's May. Possibly. It's possible. I mean, since I got home. From tour, I've literally just been locked in here working on tunes. Like, I go out still, but I just hadn't been to that venue in a minute. And I was like, fuck, I love this venue. Yeah, it's yeah. a good venue. Yeah. It's, it's a good venue. It's not too big, not too small. It's a sweet spot. Yeah. You know, I feel like Mission is when it's getting pretty big. Yeah, but I enjoy that. Like, you, there's, I feel like there's so much more room. It's nice. Totally, totally. Yeah. And they finally turned on the disco ball. Dude, I forget where it was. I finally saw it. I think it was like Peekaboo last year. Yeah, I was like finally saw it. I was like, dude, where's this disco ball been the whole time? Well, apparently, I mean, I didn't know, but everybody's saying uh, that the disco ball being on at Cervantes was like a thing they never saw. Oh, you're talking about at Cervantes or Mission? They, they have it at Mission too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was talking about Mission. Yeah, I haven't even seen it at Cervantes. They have it at Cervantes. So uh, Mike, I guess, shined some park hands on it, like 
Yeah, it much, can't be so. that fucking hard. It's not that hard. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, it's not that big of a deal, but apparently it was a big deal. The so. motherfucker reflects, dude. Just shine a light <laughs> at it, dude. Let it spin. Yeah. You know, it does all the work. Yeah. 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 But how are you doing today, brother? Good, man. Just uh, just chilling. Just cook some steak as normal. And, uh, you hard on the meat right now? Oh, big time. Yeah? Big time. Yeah. I mean, a few months ago, I was straight uh, carnivore diet. And then um, I weaned off that, and I got a little bit into mashed potatoes and rice now. Yeah, that's so. not that tastes good. <laughs> yeah, when I say I'm carnivore, or I'm like on a carnivore diet. Usually, people are just like, either like that's awesome, or what the fuck's wrong? With they you? just think you're the liver king. Totally. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> look, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, and I don't push on anybody. If it comes up in conversation, I'll talk about it. But um, it's an interesting topic because it's so extreme it's like you only eat meat it's like yeah well you know i uh i got into it because i thought it might like help my health a little bit and it actually did so now i don't want to go back what what was wrong with you uh well i got uh tinnitus uh, i mean i was having like vertigo and stuff you know i was playing shows i was on stage i was like I'm not like an uh, like a astrology thing, vertigo. Like, that, what do you mean you have vertigo? What is that, dude? I, isn't that, I, I don't know if I'm right or not, but that sounds like some like, you know, it sounds like a lady deep in the bayou doing some like witchcraft, or it just sounds like a month that you're born in. I don't know. I mean, well, no, it's uh, the witchcraft thing with the lady sounds a lot more magical than what it actually is. It's like you just want to fall over because you feel dizzy. Dang, <laughs> it's not. It's you not ever tried a, drinking? Not as magical. Oh yeah, I mean, I used to do that a lot too, and that yeah. that make me fall over real quick. But yeah, dude, wouldn't that be crazy if that was the cure? Uh, <laughs> drinking? Yeah. Fuck no. I, apparently, it's not. Apparently, it does the opposite. Well, yeah. What is what is a vertigo? Um, well, for me, I'd be on stage and just like like randomly like feel like the earth is like sideways oh. or something, and then you just you obviously want to fall over, so you're like equilibrium is way off. And I don't know where it came from or why it happened, but I just was super, super unhealthy for like 10 years before like two or three years ago. Like finally, when I got an apartment, I was off the road out of my school bus and actually able to like support myself financially a little bit. I was able to start actually buying groceries, yeah, which is a huge change. <laughs> I had like, you know, a shower and, and like my own bed, which was a change. <laughs> so I was eating like whatever I could eat, like straight up. Like I'd be leaving a festival and actually get like a pack of sunflower seeds as like, and that's your meal. And that would actually be my meal. Oh damn, bro. You were poor. I was, I was, I was roughing it for a while. Yeah. And, um, and then when I was in my bus out on the river in Pennsylvania, which is where I kept it, like I saw, I would, I take it out on the road I do a bunch of festivals. I come back and park it. And then I'd have my 92 Ford Ranger, which is like a truck I got for like 400 bucks, like just like spray painted black, you know, I actually looked pretty badass to nice. be honest. Nice. Um, and then I'll just like drive that into town and grab whatever I could. If I could get like, you know, some chicken, I would. And then if I couldn't get chicken, I'd get some canned food. So, I mean, I'd, I'd be coming back and cooking that stuff, eating that and damn dude, I think just like all the aluminum or something from all the canned food or like all like the shitty meat products I was eating or whatever it was. But yeah, years of it, I think caught up with me and I used to drink a lot too. Mm. So I think like just everything and all, all the coolant I got that like poured on me, like working on that engine oil. I mean, I always had chemicals going to my body of some sort. Make you strong though, dude. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> apparently it breaks give, it down. Give you a superpower. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. I bro. wish. Yeah. But no, instead I found that if I went on carnivore, it made me feel a lot better. And um, my vertigo was completely gone mm. and my tinnitus went way down. Like I wasn't hearing ringing all the time and uh, I felt really good. So I just keep doing that. I tried vegetarian for a little bit too. And that didn't help at all. I mean, I was doing vegetarian for like two weeks and everything was just worse. I mean, I was hearing super loud ringing. I mean, vertigo was bad. I felt like terrible. Mm. So yeah, for me, it worked really well. Dude, I remember you came to see me do comedy last year and you were like off of like carbs and sugar or whatever at that totally. time. And you were like a two weeks in or something. You were like, dude, I'm fucking losing it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. It kind of sucks getting into it at first. Yeah. It does. Like the first two weeks can really suck. First week 
in general really sucks. I mean, you're like running to the bathroom because you just like your body, your body's just like, what is going on? It's just trying to shit it all out. Yeah. Doesn't know what's happening at all. Um, cause you know, it's used to process foods and sugar, at least me. It was like used to all this random stuff. Cause I was just a garbage disposal with food. Like I eat anything. Like it didn't matter what it was. If it's in front of me, I'll just eat it. That's maybe the ass, but yep. Yeah. And these days I, I can't. I am. Like, at least I don't want to. How hard is it just to eat only meat? I mean, it sounds like just saying it out loud sounds nice, but like, you know, I like bread, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty awesome. I mean, like, uh, I go down to Texas quite a bit, so I'll, I'll just get like barbecue when I'm down there. I get barbecue up here. Um, I'll eat usually like one steak a day. And if I don't, I'll just have like ground beef and you know, whatever else, uh, corned beef is great. I'll just put that in the oven for a few hours. It's a pretty awesome diet. Like I love how stoked you are on yeah. it, dude. <laughs> as long as you like meat, it's gonna yeah, be dude. pretty cool. I like meat, dude. Yeah. I could go I could try it, dude. Yeah, I've been seeing you like reviewing barbecue spots online, dude. And I actually I, I screenshot of one of them because it was here in Denver. Hey. I was like, you know, always looking for good barbecue, bro. Yeah, smoke is that's the one you probably screenshotted. Yeah. Um yeah, smoke is in Rhino. They're awesome. Like super like clean aesthetic but uh aj's is what i want to hit everybody keeps telling me aj's yeah so i ate that, brothers last night Ooh, i'm sorry to hear well that. i thought it was, i thought it was good dude but there wasn't a single brother in there <laughs> i'm serious dude i was pissed dude i liked brothers until i got their burnt ends mm. and then i just won't go back I'm just, dude, you can't call yourself brothers and it just be a bunch of white dudes in there. Like, I don't trust that barbecue. Well, we're also in Colorado. That's true. But if it was a bunch of brothers in Colorado who had a barbecue spot called Brothers, you bet your ass it's going to be the best fucking barbecue out here, dude. I mean, you got to check out Brothers outside of Colorado. I mean, I, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. I do have Brothers Chicken down in New Orleans, and it was like this gas station chicken. But mm. that shit smack, boy. Damn. Yeah. yeah. New Orleans got some good food. Yeah. Man. I love New Orleans. That's that, a good time. Yeah. The whole culture down there, the piano bars. Oof. Man, you can walk around all night and just like have a time. Oh, dude, if I don't eat crawfish this season, I'm going to fucking hurt somebody. Go to New Orleans. Dude, I'm going to Tampa. I'm going to Florida. That's your next hometown, time. right? Huh? Miss, uh, it's, that's my soul town. Mm. That's where my soul is. Mm. But uh, I'm going to Florida next weekend. I'm like, we got a day off the next day. I'm like, we got to find crawfish. Oh. And he's like, are there, are there crawf is there crawfish in Florida? I'm like, there has to be, or I'm going to fucking lose it. <laughs> I'm going to die. What do you got going on in Florida? Uh, Sunset. Sunset Music Festival. Oh, yeah. shit. Right, yeah, right. Should be a good-ass time, bro. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, three years in a row. It's always the best, bro. Tampa's wild. Tampa mm. is like my favorite city to play in right now. Like, they, they're taking over mm. of just like the ratchet tree. Totally, totally. Yeah, there's this like... Uh, is this I don't give a fuck mentality in Florida for sure. Yeah, you saw them during COVID, bro. They really didn't give a fuck. No, they didn't care at all. <laughs> what well, you know that I think that's why it's such a love or hate state. You know? Yeah, like it's it's so polarizing. You either love Florida or you hate it. Bro, I was looking at it the whole time during lockdown. I'm like, damn, Florida looks like a good time, bro. Mm. I'm thinking about going there. Yeah, I mean, I used to not like Florida at all. The older I got, um, the older I get, every time I go, I actually like it. St. Pete, oh, you know, is awesome. How old are you now? 32. 32? Dude, you look great, dude. It's all the meat. It's just the meat diet, man. Is that why gay dudes look so good? <laughs> <laughs> they look great, dude. They're looking, they, they're aging real fantastically, you know? How old are you? I'm 27. I'm 27. aging like shit, dude. Man, yeah, you look terrible. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Fuck. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Looking terrible, Gotta dude. get you on that diet, man. Yeah, I'll try it out, dude. I think you'd like it. It's just, does it get hard when you're on the road? No. No. no, because, uh, I mean, you're not eating like the best quality meat a lot of the time, but I'll be in an airport. I'll go to McDonald's. I'll just grab a bunch of patties from mm -hmm. McDonald's. Cause I, uh, I mean, it has to be ground beef, like through legislation, it has to be just like straight up ground beef. There can't be anything in it besides salt and pepper. Yeah. So, I mean, if they did, I mean, they're just breaking the law. So you're dude. telling me you're going to McDonald's and just getting a fucking patty. Yep. Quarter pound, quarter pounders though. Quarter pounders. You can't get anything else because the quarter pounders aren't frozen. It's like the only it's like the only patties they have that aren't frozen. Are you paying the price of a quarter pounder? Or, no. Okay, thank it's God, like, dude, dude. I was I was just in Vegas and I was at the Luxor. I went down to like uh, some sort of McDonald's or something, and I mean everything on that menu was like you know fifteen north of fifteen bucks, and I got like 
a pound and a half of meat for like nine bucks. Nice. It's so that's awesome. the way to go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you get some weird looks sometimes. No veggies though, huh? Nothing. Nah, no veggies. Dang, okay. All right. No veggies. Sounds, sounds, you know, I'd be a little upset going to McDonald's and, not, and getting a Big Mac with just the meat. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I'd be upset about it. Yeah. I, again, I don't recommend it for everybody. It's just like, if I feel good anecdotally, I'm yeah. just going to do it. Because hey. like, dude, man, you don't, when you're walking around, you're feeling dizzy. It fucking sucks. Like, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to be feeling that way. And if I, fa- if I find something that works, I'm totally going to dive straight into that. Like I said, I'm a very extreme person. So yeah, I'm like 0% or 100% on almost everything. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I try, I try to be like that sometimes. And, uh, and then, you know, I just, um, I don't even know where the fuck I was going with that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had Smokeland in here earlier, and we were just working on music, and he's smoking weed right next to me. I swear to God, I got contact high. Was that today? Yeah. What? It didn't even smell like weed in here, too, which is wild. No, it does. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. That ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> like, right when I walked in, I was like, damn, it smells like weed in here. Yeah, dude, I don't even smoke, but, you know, people can smoke in here. You know, this is you know this is the studio. If you want to light up, go ahead. I feel like that's almost a rarity in the scene if you don't smoke. Yeah, dude, we're fucking nerds. Yeah. You don't smoke either. No, I don't smoke either. Yeah. That's weird. Dude, it's very weird because everybody that I live with all smokes weed. You know, I get made fun of, dude. They make fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. That must that must hurt. It sucks. <laughs> 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 When's the last time you got high, dude? Oh, man. High school? Damn, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think high school. I mean, I smoked when I was, uh, I was probably, I think I was like 17. And I remember having this weird mentality back then where I was like, I have to experience it so I can like tell my kids, you know, because like to me, it was a big deal. Like smoking wasn't like a small deal. Like, you know, I, I grew up in a household that was like pretty conservative and, you know, my parents were like pretty on me about like you know doing the right thing and so when I decided to smoke I was like I'm gonna do this to tell a story almost like okay I want I want this as a part of my like chapter of being a kid because I don't know I'd see that 70s show and like they would always like be smoking weed and stuff I'm like it can't be that big of a deal whatever sublimate allegedly smoking weed we yeah, know allegedly. Right? allegedly yes 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 that's Alleged- how I was able to be on the allegedly. TVs yeah of course and uh so I did and it was awful it was like so terrible i remember um i like i didn't know what time was anymore (laughs) like like i i i just kept talking but i didn't know what i was saying (laughs) it was bizarre and like time was just like i was like i was like time traveling are you are you sure this wasn't cocaine i i swear (laughs) i explained this to a few friends like after that the friends i smoked with and they were looking at me like dude you didn't smoke the same stuff we smoked. <laughs> yeah. So I think I just had a crazy reaction to mm. it. And I smoked. Uh, I actually had to get over that. It took me a long time because uh, it cracked open anxiety for me. Ooh. I didn't know what anxiety was. Dude, I didn't know what anxiety was until I got high as an adult. Mm. Yeah, I feel you on Damn. that. Yeah, straight up. For real. Straight up. Wow. When did you smoke for the first time? I mean, I smoked when I was a child. You know, I probably started smoking when I was like 13, 14. And then whenever I was about 18 or 17 or 18, I stopped. And then I did it again when I was like 21. Mm. And I was like, bro, this, what is, I was explaining it to like my girlfriend at the time. She's like, that's anxiety. You know, I was explaining Mm. to her how I felt about it because I was like panicking, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what happened to me. I had no idea. I thought I was going into like, like a state of psychosis or something Mm. because nobody could, like relate to what I was saying. I was like, I just feel like I'm about to implode. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand like what the meaning of anything is. Like, I just keep rethinking like, w- like why did I do these things and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you think about all the most embarrassing shit yeah, possible. Yeah. And you start <laughs> thinking like, am I truly who I think I am? And like all this like nutso stuff, like super existential for me, at least a lot of existential stuff too. Yeah. Sometimes when I get high, I like hate myself. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, it's also a, a psychedelic. Like, you know, weed is still classified as a psychedelic. But I enjoy psychedelics. Well, we, I mean, not all psychedelics are the same. That's true. You know? Very true. Ay- ayahuasca, LSD, psilocybin. I mean, if I think, is, is MDMA even considered a psychedelic? Kyle, can you look it up if that's considered a psychedelic? I think it might be. I think it might be. Mm. 
Well, weed in, weed in general is like one of those really polarizing ones. Like, you know, you can smoke it your whole life. I had a friend, same story as you. He smoked it his entire life. And then just like one day, just like cracked, you know, just he's on a train. He had to call his mom and like full blown adult, mm. like had to call his mom to have her come pick him up from the train because he he couldn't figure out what the fuck happened to him. Like it, all, he said it felt almost like he got dosed with a psychedelic. Mm. that like out of nowhere he started tripping and that was my first experience with weed and i just never wanted to touch it again so i did of course <laughs> naturally touch it again uh like two more times um i took a rip of a gra gravity bong with my brother in his apartment um i don't know why i thought that'd be a good idea like <laughs> what let me let me ask you this was the gravity bong a fucking two liter of Coke just cut open? Yeah. <laughs> Those things fuck you up. Dude. I had no idea what that was. Right. I had no idea. Uh, he's just like, would you want to take a rip of a, of a gravity bong? And I was like, that sounds cool. A gravity bong? <laughs> yeah, like, that, I don't know. It does sound cool. This is the name of it. It just sounded awesome. Yeah. So I did. And it was um, it was like the same thing. I got, I, I took, took the rip and then I walked to the train uh, to go home. And it's, yeah, I always had these like super delayed hits. It would take like minutes to hit me. So I wouldn't get like high immediately. I would just take the rip, walk to the train. And then I am like hit in the face, like a bag of bricks. It was just straight up. Like I remember holding on to this railing <laughs> and I just, I didn't, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know why I was there. I, I couldn't even remember like really like it was kind of hard for me to even tell like who I was. Like mm. I'm just thinking so deep and existentially about everything. And I know that I'm going to grand central, but I don't know if I'm ever going to make it there. Like, well, here's the thing, dude, if you're going to be high, I'm probably one of the best places you could be high on is like a train. Cause they have the people telling you where to go, oh, where to sit. No, 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 no. Not in Sunnyside Queens. On okay. The got you. Got you. No, nah, we're talking Sunnyside. Oh, subway. Oh, su <laughs> Sunnyside Queens subway. Got you. Yeah. Like, Definitely, probably one of the worst places to be high. <laughs> Damn, bro. Let's say, that's a funny concept. Where's the worst place you could be high at? Definitely exactly where I was. Where you where, there? I say like a children's museum. That's a pretty bad place to be high at. Nah, definitely. <laughs> de I, all right, look. If if you're, I would say if we really had to think about it, yeah. The Meow Wolf, specifically. Have you been in the Meow Wolf? Dude, I just went like two weeks ago. Okay, so maybe you know the room I'm talking about. There's a room downstairs in the Meow Wolf where there's like all these clowns and shit. Yeah. That you room. scared of clowns? I'm actually not, but that's a creepy fucking room. It is creepy. Dude, I used to be terrified of clowns. And then what got me out of it was ICP. Ooh. That got yeah. me out of it, bro. Right. I'm fucking down with the clown yeah, now, yeah, son. Yeah, they dude, made it cool. Dude, they made it so ah. cool, dude. I was like, damn. Next time I go to a Juggalo show, dude, I'm fucking painting up, dog. Man. Yeah. Going all in, having fun with it. All right, so you so you know a decent amount of stuff about like ICP. Yes. Okay. All right. So what's the deal? Because I I heard, I don't know anything about ICP. Okay. I know that my brother used to listen to them. He had this creepy ass poster in his room. I thought it was badass, and they put out all these albums. Are they still putting out albums? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do they have a story that goes along with all the albums? Like, is there like a big story arc? Um, no. I mean, they have like their songs are themed. But I don't think there's like a theme for the album. Okay. Because I was always under the impression, somebody was telling me that they're coming out with like all these albums and they kind of keep alluding to this answer that they're eventually going to have. Like mm. they're, they're going to like reveal the big answer. And maybe, then they, maybe I haven't noticed it yet. Well, I think they came out with an album that was the answer. Interesting. And the answer was that there's a God and God loves you. And apparently it made everybody like, like super polarized. Like, yeah, I would not expect that from now. Them. All this could be totally like made up bullshit. Just fake news, dude. I just can't tell because it's just like from a friend that told me this. Yeah. So if you're an ICP fan, I was like, what's the actual deal? I don't, I don't think there's a recurring thing. They do have been a crazy fucking story though. So I don't know if you know about their, like their symbol, the hatchet man. No, you ever seen it? It's no. like a man holding a hatchet. Anyway, a couple years ago, the FBI put out, uh, American America's top notorious gangs and ice uh, juggalos were on the list. And so now if you have your Axeman 
t-shirt or like a tattoo or whatever, if you get pulled over for like speeding or like weed or whatever, you're now going into the system as gang affiliated. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So they had like this big uh, march in Washington. They'll be like, dude, we're fucking, these are, they're just fans. Because think about like who their fan base is, dude. Probably just like, you know, some fucking white trash kids in the middle of Ohio or something like that. You know what I mean? And so like, that's all they have. You know Mm, what I mean? So they're all repping that shit. And those are probably the people, you know, I'm not saying they're all causing trouble, but like that probably was what happened was just a lot of people getting in trouble in these small towns were wearing these juggalo merch items. And so they got labeled by the FBI as a uh, notorious gang. Wow. So any any offense you have, like it gets that much more serious if you have like an ICP shirt on or like a tattoo. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. It's just fucked up. Well, what you know, what is the difference between like it's it's hard to tell. There's such a like a, such a blurry line between a band or you know a DJ and a gang, uh, you know, at least with a fan base, you know, like if you start, like, if you start a fan base of some sort, right, it can easily be the most loving community of all time, mm-hmm. right? And everybody like makes a garden together and, you know, everybody like shares food at the events or whatever. Wouldn't or that'd like, be nice. Yeah. Or, or like say your yoga instructor or something. Somebody has to like start the thing, mm-hmm. you know, and then that can easily turn into, uh, it can go from gardening into a cult. Yeah. You know, and then there's like, there's like a leader of some sort, you know, and with ICP, instead of a cult, it turns into a gang. Right. And then with, you know, EDM festivals, it, it's pretty normal for the most part. I mean, probably not normal for like, you know, corporate America, but like for us, it's pretty normal. Yeah. It's just like straight up coming to the show, wanting to check out the music. And then, you know, I don't think anybody burns anything down. So it's not considered a gang. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, cause there's even like religious, like sections of certain religion that turns into a cult. Why isn't that considered a gang? Kyle, can you look up totally. what qualifies a group of people as a gang in the eyes of the government? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And real quick, um, I, I was going to answer the psychedelic question. I had some camera issues. Uh, MDMA is considered a psychedelic. Anything that changes or changes the function of a brain, uh, it's considered a psychedelic like um, hallucinations and stuff like that. Mm, mm. Uh, and then also the ICP thing that you guys were talking about, um, the buildup that uh, Jenga here is talking about was that for 20 years they were pretending to be hardcore, brutal, you know, rap rap guys, and then uh, they released a song and released it to their fans that they're actually evangelical Christians and that they've been pretending to be brutal and sadistic to trick their fans into believing in God. That would piss me no off, dude. No fucking <laughs> way. That yeah. would piss me off, dude. <laughs> I'm looking at the gang thing now. <laughs> See? I, I knew it. It's like drinking Bud Light, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> I already know where you're going with it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. Oh man, that's and is hilarious. That, and is that real? Like is that is that like were they were they just pulling a stunt or is that real? Um everything I'm reading right here says it is real. They are religious people. Uh everything I've read so far. Um but I don't know that they're really that serious about it. I yeah. think they just wanted to tell people, "Hey, just so you know, uh, we're not crazy psychopaths. We do actually believe in God." kind of thing. Wow. Mm, interesting. Wow. I bet you I know what song it is. I forget the name of the song, but it was like magnets. How do those work? That's the song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking magnets. How do, how do they those work? work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I thought that video was genius. Dude, you're just sitting there writing lyrics. Oh. And the thing that's inspiring you is playing with magnets. You're like, how the fuck? It's so genius. <laughs> this- and the, the video to back it up. Like the video. Have you seen the video? Yeah, I've seen it? the video. It's so good. It's so <laughs> good. It's so good. <laughs> that pissed me off, though, dude. I You've love it. You've been tricking me this whole time. Ah, uh, yeah, that. See, I don't get because I was never an ICP fan. Right. Like, I'm not like die hard, dude, but I'm down with the clown, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a bit of a catfish. Yeah. I mean, if they were planning that the whole time, or I wonder if they had a transition, like you know, mid career, where they were like, "Fuck this, we don't want to be hardcore thugs." I it's wonder. Dude, this is literally the same story as Bud Light right now. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just a big corporate machine. They don't know what the hell they're doing. It is, there. dude. It's so cr- like it's 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 like I don't know. I just feel like it was just a bunch of like straight men. I don't know what their corporate office is like. I'm not, I'm not gonna just you know. Just, I'm gonna assume, but I don't know for a fact. Probably just like 
how can we seem more woke or like how can we seem more mm. accepting without actually without actually like actually doing anything for that community other than like I don't know. I felt like that the whole thing, I felt like it backfired and in a weird way it caused more division. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, well, well, the, the issue they're having now is that they didn't back up uh, Dylan Mulvaney. You know, like they, they like, they didn't stand up for it. So now nobody wants their product. Yeah. So I like, mean, how much, what did their, what did uh, Bud Light stock go down, Kyle? Can you look that up? I think I, I, it was a lot from some, I heard a down, couple different things. They're down like over 20% right now. That's nuts, dude. Yeah. That's nuts. I mean, but like that's what you like that's what you get whenever you try and not be genuine about it. You right. know what I mean? Right. Right. I there's a there's a certain intuition that people have. Um like you know, talking about like school education, street smarts, right? All that aside, there's a certain intuition everyone has. Man, we have <laughs> progressed to this point in society by outrunning lions by having to judge things based on just its appearance and stature and just guess, okay, is that thing bluffing or is it going to eat me? Mm-hmm. And then we get all the way here and then we think we can bullshit people <laughs> with like, you know, uh, like seeming to be an authentic artist or right. like seeming to be an authentic brand. It's like, you, you know, you, you can't deny our DNA. Like our DNA is so good at detecting bullshit. Like, yeah. Really fucking good at it. Yeah, I'd also be interested to know that Elon Musk's mother was, uh, before Martha Stewart, was the oldest one to pose on the cover at age 74. She hot? I don't know. You want to see a picture? She actually looks good for her age. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, I saw a photo of them standing together. I was like, wow, that's his mom. That's awesome. Damn, that's crazy. Because you look at videos of him back in the day, and he looks like shit. Now he looks a lot better. Elon Musk? Yeah, dude. He, yeah, he got uh, money. Uh, yeah, well, he got money. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably gonna he do. Got it. money. Yeah, I think he got uh, like some sort of like hair transplant, and he keeps talking about some weird pill he's taking to lose weight. I don't, I don't trust any of that type of stuff. But yeah, yeah dude, apparently diet and exercise. Yeah, just yeah. exercise, man. Just get in the sun. I tell you what, dude. I fucking went and played basketball for the first time. Yesterday, with since my shoulder injury, that shit hurt like a motherfucker. Yeah, dude, let's go. Oh, so she actually was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. That's yeah, good, that's that's, that's good, Elon Musk's mom. That's wow. a good looking old lady, seventy four. Wow, Martha good Stewart ain't hot though. Do you think Martha Stewart's hot? I mean, it's subjective. I don't even know what she looks like. Really, I swear. Her you, cooking ability gives her. Uh, some that's points. true, dude. You know, that's I would sure. dick that down. <laughs> 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 this is getting out of control, dude. <laughs> so you're doing sports now? Like you're actually like in a team, like doing something? I was, man. I was, I was, I played, started playing basketball when I first moved out here, dude. Nice. I, was, I was playing like four or five days a week. It was awesome. Then I got hurt snowboarding and I got back for the first time yesterday and it hurt. So I stopped doing it. Ah. I'll get there. I'm, 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 I got a ways to go, but I'll get there, bro. Dude, I was, uh, I was biking around Denver yesterday and, on uh, what is today? Today's a Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. So I was I was out for probably four hours just biking around, and I passed a baseball field where there was uh, an adult team just playing, like random people, you know, like like me and you, just like random people. It wasn't like an actual baseball team. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. And then I passed another field. There was a volleyball team. Same thing. Just a bunch of random people. Yeah, rec Colorado. leagues, dude. It was so fucking cool. And then I was at uh, um, Confluence Park, and this whole, like, I mean, it must have been like 100 people got together to go running. I mean, Denver is awesome. It's active, dude. It is so freaking active. Dude, it's crazy. So I had my folks come and visit me. It was their first time in Colorado, and I was like, yeah, this is like the least obese state. It's like the most active state, and it's like one of the highest in education. And they were like, so this is the complete opposite of Mississippi, where it's like Mississippi's the fattest state, lowest in education, (laughs) most of, you know. And I was just like, damn, you're actually spot on. So it is totally different, but it's cool, dude. It's great. Yeah, dude. Did you ever play any sports? Oh, I played I played a ton of sports. I played soccer, baseball, basketball. I mean, I was in Boy Scouts. I did everything. My parents were really good at making sure that I was like involved in pretty much everything until I told my dad that I just wanted to skateboard. Yeah. And that was a really hard discussion because I didn't think he was going to take it the way he did cuz he's he was always very supportive, but I remember I remember it was like a lot of apprehension. It was like, okay, so you're going to do this skateboard thing. You're not going to go to team sports anymore. It was like this. 
I think he was trying to figure out if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. And ultimately, I think it was a phenomenal thing. I think skateboarding, like, kind of, it really hammers in accountability for you. You know, if you, if you're eyeing a set of stairs and you ollie them and you mess up and you miscalculate, that's all on you. It's going to hurt. Like, it's going to hurt and it's all on you. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a, a team sport, I mean, you know, you can miss the ball or whatever, but the entire time accountability is on, you know, the, the team as a whole almost. At least I think it should be. You know, yeah. I, I think a good coach might allow that to happen with the with the team sport. So I, I think they're both great, but skateboarding is just like, man, you're a lone wolf out there, and sometimes you just go to a set of stairs by yourself and just eye them for like an hour and then eventually just – get the courage to do something on them, you know? Oh, dude, I, yeah. I was like, I skateboarded a bunch when I was a kid, and I was decent. I wasn't good, dude. But you make those motherfuckers who are good and just fearless. That's another thing I think skateboarding teach you, teaches you is just, like, just be fearless. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Like, suck it up. We're about to go do this. Totally. Yeah. I always wonder, like, like why? Like, what was the payoff? I dude, you hollied the stairs, bro. I know, but it's like that, you know, <laughs> it's almost like looking back. I mean, I still understand it. Like, you know, it's obviously, like, I think part of it was the magazines and the, the skate videos, you know? The CCS magazines, dude, like the old Thrasher videos. Totally, yeah. man. Oh, hell totally. yeah. Totally. You're just trying to one-up <laughs> everything you're seeing, you know? You see, like, Nigel Houston at, like, nine years old, like, blunt sliding some crazy whatever the hell he was blunt sliding. Mm -hmm. And you go out, and you're like, all right, if Nigel can do that, then I can do this, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just, like, this constant trying to level up in your mind. And there's no money at the end of it. You know, there's no like, uh, there's, there's no like physical reward at all. You just go home being like, hell yeah, I did that <laughs> thing. And if you tell anybody that thing, nobody knows what you're talking about. Yeah. Or, or like, dude, I would just tell people I did this thing cause they weren't there. But like, dude, I just kick flipped eight, eight set, dude. <laughs> oh, well, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> that's when it starts going backwards. <laughs> That's when you're not building your mentality. All, all my skateboard friends who were much better than me. Oh, yeah, dude, I hit that tray flip over the over the pyramid, no problem. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, you know, I, I think I think if you have a community of other skateboarders that understand, yeah, you know, it's like, all right, cool, we can like share those stories. But yeah, if you're talking to your parents or some shit, they have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Yeah. My how how supportive were your folks whenever you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this music thing. Uh. My mom was apprehensive and, um, you know, my mom was like a mom, like mom. And she, she still is, you know, she still, still is still my is mom. Your mom. She still is my mom. Okay. But like my mom now is way more of a friend these days than back then where she was just like authoritative figure, you know, making yeah. sure that like I get the grades in school, making sure that, you know, I don't die doing something stupid. My dad, on the other hand, was, like, almost opposite. I mean, he was like, let's go. Let's do this thing. This sounds awesome. And he was Air Force guy. Like, you know, we'd always go on to, like, bases. And, you know, he was he was a major, so, like, a high-ranking dude. That's what's up. It was really cool to be with him and to see people, like, the sure. way that he would interact with people. He'd always make people feel good. And, um, and, like, he knew everybody's name every time I walked into a building. Like, just would light up the room, man. Let and, me ask uh, you this, though, dude. Did he make you feel good? Because my dad was a Marine, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> He just yeah. fucking put it on me, dog. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. No way. He's cool now, dude, but, you know, he's a bit of an <laughs> asshole when I was growing up. Man, see, my dad wasn't at all. Yeah. Wasn't at all. I mean, like, he, he didn't want me to join the Air Force because mm. he just saw that I was an artist. But your dad didn't see that with you? Oh, dude, my dad, I don't know what the fuck he saw in me, bro. I don't know if he saw anything. But he's cool. Like, you know, he's cool. He's what cool. does he think now? Oh, he's all about it, dude. Yeah. He's all about oh, it I now. I bet he is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool when it's cool. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it, you know, it's enjoyable whenever things are going well. Right. It's, you know, how do they stick it out? I mean, you know, he was, you know, I got him to, like, take me and my band to go play some, you know, whenever we were playing at a bar, I'd, you know, I'd get him to take me whenever my mom couldn't, you know, but, um take me my drum kit but it was just like man i don't i don't think he ever told me like you got this wow yeah that's wild so now it's crazy it, to it, think about i've never thought about that yeah 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 fuck let's turn this into a therapy session let's do it, dude let's do it <laughs> let's, let's get deep in there so so now that you're like touring and like he sees he has to see it oh like, yeah he's come to like some festivals and shows and shit wow yeah 
Just, and what's his reaction? Like, does he dope, dude? He's like, man, this shit's cool as hell, son. Fucking girls showing their titties and shit, man. <laughs> Fucking ask me if I want some cocaine. It's cool as hell. <laughs> son, you know where I get some X? I'm trying to fuck. No. <laughs> I'm not lying, no. dude. <laughs> no fucking way. Dude, he did. He walked up to me at a show one time, and he goes, son, do you know where I get some X? Get the fuck He goes, fuck you, you know where to get, I can get some X, bro. I'm trying to fuck. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he's wild, man. He's wild. Wow. So yeah. that's so it's a complete, complete change. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was just because like I noticed like as soon as I turned eighteen, he started treating me different. Hmm. You know, like as soon as I turned eighteen, he started like being somebody I could actually hang with. Like we would do cool shit. Like every it was always like outdoor shit. So like we did a lot of hunting and fishing. There's like some of my favorite memories and hmm. shit. But like when it comes to like the music stuff, because I didn't live with them, you know. But like you know, I saw him all the time. Never said anything about the music. And that wow. you, you're, with your dad being in the army, I was wondering if there's any parallels. But you just sounded like your dad was cool. Nah, he was all about it. I mean, he, you know, the reason I even got into music was because of my dad. Like he was always jamming out to Ozzy Osbourne and Thin Lizzy. You know, just like we'd be going bass to bass. I, when we were in uh, the UK specifically, we'd have to do these really long drives because. It is all farm out there. Yeah. And um, we were two hours northeast of London. And he would just, like, play air guitar to Ozzy Osbourne. You know, like, Randy Rhodes became one of my favorite guitarists of all time just because, like, I don't know, my dad liked it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, eventually I, I thought, you know, he thinks they're really cool. So, Man, I should do like that, you know. Like that's that's fucking awesome. If my dad thinks those guys are cool, well, I want my dad to think I'm cool. Yeah, because we we were always friends, you know. And um, we were at Guitar Center in London one time, <clears throat> and I I you know my parents, you know, like I said, were pretty conservative for the most part. They wouldn't like buy me a bunch of shit. They were just like straight like parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one time in Guitar Center in London. I was looking at this guitar. It's like this all-in-one Fender amp guitar. And I was like, this is so cool. I just couldn't stop talking about it. I mean, dude, I was obsessed with guitar, by the way. Like, I would be in the backyard carving. Literally, I would I would carve out of wood from a tree that I would cut down myself, like just picks, guitar picks. And nice. I would carve them. Nice. Like, I just made a ton of them. And I didn't have a guitar, though. Like, I, I was just so obsessed, though. I'd do everything around the guitar, but not have the guitar. And mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, my parents would see I have these, like, picks and shit. And they're just like, what is this kid doing? I'd even buy tab books from the guitar shop just to read the tabs, you know, on how to play these songs. Yeah. And I didn't have a guitar, but I was just, like, doing it in my head. I'm like, man, that would sound probably, like, really cool, you know? But, mm -hmm. like, when I have a guitar. So, eventually, my dad's just like, oh, you like that? I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, all right, let's buy it. And my Sick. my mom was cool with it too. And they just bought me a guitar. And then that's where it started, bro. Well, I, st I stared at it for months. I didn't <laughs> want to play it. It like scared me. Oh, damn. It was like really weird. Like finally I got it and I'm like, oof. Yeah. Man, I don't know. See, like my dad was, whenever I was the, a drummer, he was like, that's badass, son. But like whenever I was doing the DJ thing, like I said, just never any like uh, interest until he saw that I was doing cool shit. Yeah, that's the hard thing. I think I think everybody has to go through that phase when they're starting something new. Yeah, I mean, I get it, though, dude. I mean, they didn't grow up with this type of music. You know what I mean? Like, for a parent to be like, what the fuck are you trying to do? But what if you did something, like, more in their realm of what they consider success? Like, what if you, like, start a law firm or something? Like, They'd be stoked. See, but that's like now they're still they're stoked now. Like right. my mom and stepdad were like all for it. They were like, "Do it, dude! You got this shit." Dad's just like, "All right, on son, okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right." Just all right. You're doing what now? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pussy, <laughs> <laughs> man. And how long did it take you to get to the point where like your dad could come out to a show? Like how many years from oh, starting it to where he's like, "Okay, I see what you're doing." Probably like six years. Okay. Like six years, that's good uh, yeah. So, but we're there now. He's all he's all jammed up about it now, dude. Yeah, he's telling his friends now. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. oh yeah. My son's fucking kicking ass, man. Rock star, <laughs> doing the dub steps. I don't quite understand it, dude. But it's cool as hell. <laughs> he's a character, dude. Man, I took my mom out to a show uh, recently um, in Vegas with Ganja White Night. Mm. We did uh, Area Fifteen. Have you been to that? Yeah, I've been yet? there. It's yeah, awesome. yeah, it's it's fucking great, man. That mm -hmm. whole like backyard section. Yep. 
And I was nervous because, you know, my, like I said, my dad, if he came out to show, which he never, I never got him out to show. He ended up passing away a few years ago. Damn. And uh, so I really wanted to take my mom out to show because I was like, all right. I want I want her to see what this is. Like I want her to like understand it a, at least a little bit. Like as to what her son's doing, and I was nervous because she wasn't, you know, the same as my dad. She wasn't like super like go getter, you know, kind of the way, the way your dad is now. Who's yeah. super stoked on it. She was just like, oh yeah, okay, like sure, you know, sounds yeah. good as long as you have an apartment and you're doing anything. Dude, she fucking loved it, man. Yeah. Oh, she loved it. It's hard not to. I mean, that's your son up there playing probably a couple thousand people who's with Ganja. Mm, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's that's cool shit. Oh, it was so great. And yeah. and and all the uh, you know, all the girls in the front row were were giving my mom their bracelets and you know, doing like the the plur. Oh yeah. You know, uh like <laughs> handshake and my mom was like just freaking out over it. She just said she came back. She's trying to like show me what they're doing. She was like doing this thing. I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. Like, uh, I was like, y- you're doing the uh, the plur exchange, and she's yeah. like, she's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I'm like, yeah, it's like you know, it's the peace, love, unity, respect. Dude, I had a very similar situation. My sister went to her first electronic festival. She went to EDC Orlando last year, and you know, she was hitting me up like nervous before, like asking me what I, what I think she should do. And I was like, you should just go if you're going with a group of people have a place to meet them, but go do your thing. Mm. I was like, if, if an opportunity arises or people come up that seem cool, roll with it. And then, totally. and then she texts me during the festival. She goes, candy is not actual candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great, man. Oh, that's so cool. It's just this little Southern bale. It's so awesome to be able to like show other people, like bring them into what you're doing. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it kind of makes you see it through, through fresh eyes again, a little bit. Because you're like, damn, actually, this is, like, really fucking cool. You Super. Know? It's the, one of the coolest things ever. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've been doing it for so long, you know, it's like you start, you know, you start seeing a lot of things as common denominators at the shows. Like, you, the stage setup is always going to be very similar. The CDJs are always going to be the same. And then you start thinking about your set more than anything, you know. You start thinking about that mix down of that master more than anything. Or like maybe the new visuals you have or the aspect ratio going to fit on the screen or some shit. Yeah. You know, it's kind of nice to just like, I don't know, see your mom like exploding of joy and you're like, right. The big picture is this shit's just fucking awesome. It's fun. Like just in general. You ain't seen shit like this, have you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It is cool. Man, one of the things I did want to bring up today though, because we're just going off right now. It's been, this is great. I love it. Dude, but one of the things I love about you is you do a lot of shit for the community. You do a lot of, like, free parties and pop-ups. I even cooked at one of them one time, made food for everybody. You did. Yeah. I think you got an 8.2 rating, I think it was. I mean, dude, it was, like, what, 80 burgers and 100 hot dogs, dude? That was pretty good. Pretty good, dude. It's pretty good. (laughs) We're going to have some fall through the cracks, whatever. Oh, yeah. You know. (laughs) I love right after that rating, there's, like, a, a video of a hot dog on the floor. Yeah. (laughs) A <laughs> hundred hot dogs. We're gonna one's gonna wind one's up on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I just remember. I forget who was working the grill. It might have even been you. I don't know. But I was just like, get out the way. <laughs> I think it was me. I think. Yeah. And you were like flipping the burgers way too early. I was like, no, no, no. no. I was like, come here. Let me. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I'm but then you got to enjoy your party, dude. Which was a cool fucking party. Right. I love that you come out to them, man. Yeah, they're fun. It's, I haven't I been to you. one in a while. I want to come to one. Yeah, I'm gonna do one in like a month, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably a month. Yeah. What made you want to do these secret parties? Uh, well, I haven't been doing the bus, you know? I mean, the bus is what got me into all of it. Like, nobody, nobody, uh, you know, I, no hate against any record label or anybody I ever reached out to when I first started, but, like, nobody would fuck with me. Like, nobody would, nobody would listen to my music. Nobody would want to sign it. Couldn't get on any shows. So, eventually, and that was fine. Like, I... The whole time, like I'm, I'm used to rejection, you know, like I was like, that's, that's totally cool with me. Like, I don't, I like making the music, but I want to play the shows. So I got a bus and I played the shows anyways. Mm-hmm. So I'd just bring it into the festivals and play my music out of the bus. And, um, I figured out this whole thing. I was like, okay, well, I know when I'm at a festival, there's always a campsite that goes off. Like after the festival shuts down Mm -hmm. from 2 a.m. to like 7 in the morning. So I can either bring all my shit in a van and just play my music until the sun comes up and then maybe start like making friends and like 
handing out like business cards with my name on it, like Jenga, you know, like, Hey, I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ. Listen, <laughs> that's to my never show. worked. Dude. Yeah. 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 But I was like, all right, uh, I got to figure this out. So I, I watched a documentary, uh, about the further bus of grateful dead. And I was 24 years old and I saw it with, um, my girlfriend at the time at her house. And I remember waking up the next morning. It was an amazing documentary. I remember waking up the next morning and I was like, what's keeping me from just kind of doing what the Grateful Dead did? Like they just, they didn't really plan on this whole thing happening, but they ended up just traveling in a bus, playing their music everywhere and just kind of making friends, which turned into like a traveling group of friends, which turned into them touring. Yeah, it turned into a whole ass career. Turned out, yeah. Now they're like, you know, selling out Soldier's Field and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, if I have a year to live, which I always, you know, have this mentality, like I said, very extreme, but I'm like, okay, if I have a year to live starting right now, what would I do? And I thought it would be pretty badass to spend everything I have, just buy a bus and then go around playing these shows. So I had $4,000. I got a bus for 2700 Yeah, I remember you you, to, you told me like the um, the last time we did the podcast, you were telling me about the bus, that whole backstory behind it. Yeah. yeah. And it's a fucking cool story, though. Well, eventually that got to the point where I'm able to obviously play on stages now, but I'm missing that community aspect mm. because the stage is not quite as community driven. So how do we get that community aspect back? Throw a fucking secret party, man, you know, yeah. but don't make it like an actual show. You got to keep it like a secret thing, like for real secret, you know, because like if you're doing like, yo, pop up show and then it's like, you know, 10,000 people. Yeah, show you up. saw what happened with Grizz. Like he did one in like Boulder or Vail somewhere here in Colorado a couple of weeks ago. And sure. he literally just put it up on his Instagram and Twitter. And then there's like 7,000 people outside. Dude, that's insane. Like, that's that's nuts, absolutely dude. insane. I mean, Gri Grizz at this point is like straight pop star celebrity i mean yeah. that, that's that's insane you know mm -hmm. i mean that's the equivalent of like i don't know like any other massive artist just announcing something like yeah i mean look what happened with kanye west when he said he's playing webster hall i mean like they had to shut down the street Damn. you know so how do you keep them like small and intimate i think the the secret party just like only a select few people having like a, a phone number and being able to come keeps it fun and intimate and do you have like a um like a limit at how many people can have the number? If we're doing a party and there's a capacity, it'll only be sent out to like part of the hotline. So some people may or may not get it. And I don't know any of the numbers on it. So it's just a random draw. It's like you have, you have no idea who, who's, whose numbers are whose. None of them are labeled. It's like on a dashboard that I have on a website. <laughs> so like, I, I don't, I don't know whose numbers are who it's just like, okay, we're just going to select like this many and then everybody's getting the text in, yeah. that, in that section. Has it gotten out of control yet? Has it ever gotten out of control? Nope. Nope. Everybody's super respectful. That's what's up. It's wild. Dude, there was a bunch of chips, like bags and uh, bags of chips, pretzels on a table. And, you know, before everybody shows up, it gets all wild and you're trying to like make sure everything, you know, the grill's going and you got some drinks and all this stuff. And I forgot to open the bags. So at least an hour went by the party and like there's probably 150 people there 200 people just hanging out chilling and i walk up to the table and none of the bags are open nice but there's a bunch of people like hovering around them <laughs> and i'm like are you do you guys want the chips <laughs> they're like yeah but they're not open and i was like you can just open them and they're like oh can we that's great and they started opening them and i was like wow that's amazing like they're just like super like almost like overly respectable. Like, yeah, that like, was really cool. And then they helped clean up afterwards. And yeah. Yeah. The two that I went to, I've been to two of yours and it was like, everyone, it was chill. It felt like, you know, just a laid back party. Totally. You know, it's good times. I, I mean, I'm sure it's been a great way to meet people. Oh, it's an amazing way to meet people. Have you made like any friends from it? Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even uh, the show at serves the other night, I was looking out, you know, even that front row, I think like three people. I mean, if I can remember, uh, th probably, probably three people from those secret parties that we just always see each other at a secret party and hang out. And, you know, uh, they have like their own things that they do like, uh, photography or they do like CNC machining and stuff. And, you know, we're always exchanging ideas like, Oh, like what if we do this? Or like, Oh, here's a photo I took at the barbecue. You know, it's, it's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. I, f I feel like if you're, if you're constantly traveling and, and you know, the grind cause you're always touring, 
you're seeing a lot of people, but that doesn't mean that you're getting in that like social part of yourself. Mm. You know, it, in a weird way, it can almost be alienating sometimes because you're like just playing a bunch of shows, go back to the hotel, play another show, go back to the hotel. But like the barbecues are designed to legit just be like straight hang sesh. Yeah, that was a good point. Yeah, I miss like, I don't go out as much as I used to. Only time I really go out is like to go do comedy or go to a show. And like going to shows I've gotten harder to go to because people won't leave me alone, which is fine. I get it. Mm. But like, yeah, like. It's nice, uh, nice not, I live, I live now with like my best friends. So like, you know, we watch a lot of games together. So I still get like that social aspect, but yeah, you're totally right. Just go into a fucking house party. Like the, some of the best times right there. Totally. Yeah. How, how is it at the barbecues? You get left alone kind of? Uh, no, mm. but it's, but it's, but it's not as bad, mm. you know? Yeah. There's a weird, there's a weird thing that happens at those barbecues where like people, they know who you are, like for sure. And obviously they know who I am, but there's like a weird thing. Well, they'll, they'll like talk to you, but also like, I don't know, like it's just supposed to be a homie sesh. So everybody assumes it's a homie sesh. So Mm -hmm. it just turns into that, you know, whereas if you just get off a stage, there has been this separation between you and the audience the entire time. So now it's kind of like the fence has come down. Holy shit. Yo, yeah. what's up? Charge the gates. Yeah. Storm like, the Capitol. Like, oh, here's this thing. Here's this thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it, it's like, but if, if the fence is never there, you know, like with two dogs, have you ever put, like, you ever seen videos of two dogs that, oh, this is so funny. There's this video. Where are you going with this? There's this video of a rolling gate in a driveway, right? You know, one that opens and closes. Mm-hmm. And these mm-hmm. dogs, man, they're just going at it. Just like. You know, if they were speaking dog language, it's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Just like, just barking, barking, barking. And the, the gate is rolling open. And then as it continues to roll open, they both realize that the separation is leaving them. And they become chill. And then they start barking, barking a little lighter. And then eventually, once the gate's completely gone, they're just kind of like heads down, tails between the legs. And then they're just kind of like, what's up? What's up? Dude, everybody, here it is right here. Yes! Kyle's got it for us. <laughs> And that's some like strong looking dogs. Look at that, man. Oh, Look dude. Look at that. They pussy. <laughs> <laughs> they start barking at each other again. Uh, and then and then it opens Look up. That. Look at that. What's up? Bro, I think everybody on Twitter needs to learn from this video. Dude, mad funny. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, this is literally the internet in the nutshell, dude. Everyone like out there talking shit, saying these horrible things, saying they don't like you, but if they met you in person, like Hey, we're all just people. Like, what's up? Yeah, have you ever run into anybody ever in person that has been, like, to your face, like, I don't like you or something? No, never. Yeah, same. Never. But I deal with it on the internet almost every day. Really? Yeah. You do? Yes. Really? Yes. On a daily basis? Uh, yeah. Like, what kind of stuff? Like, like, fuck this dude, this fucking... I got called a bigot because I'm from the South, and I'm like, that's kind of racist. But, um... Dude, I've gotten called so many damn things, but it's usually just like, uh, he's corny, his music sucks. Mm. Uh, and it's all because, like, I just, I guess the thing is they haven't even listened to my music. They don't know me. They just see some of the stuff I post it, with, with seeing one thing or hearing somebody say one bad thing about me so they have their minds made up about me. Mm. They think they know who I am. It's like, bro, like, the music's good. I work really hard on it. Like, mm. I, I can say that. The music's tight. Totally. Like, and I'm not saying anything ever to be mean. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to make you laugh. That's, like, my thing. Right. And so like, you know, I, you know, I most, but, I, but it's always like that one person a day, but when it first like a hundred other love, like people showing love a day. So it's like, but, but us as artists, so, you know, sometimes that we pay attention to that one thing. Mm. And it's like a lot, you know, I've had some people like go off on me on the internet and I'm like, like saying, saying these like things about me that aren't true or assuming they know who I am. I'm like, dude, if you sat down and talked with me, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be saying any of these things. We'd see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. And totally. you'd be fucking, totally. you'd be, you'd realize, damn, I was being a bitch. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah. It's a weird thing, man. I mean, especially on Twitter, obviously. It's Twitter, all Twitter. Twitter it's- is like a, yeah, I, I, I don't even understand. I mean, that's, dude, that, that is why I just, I don't go online. Like I'm just, I'm off. It's beautiful, I'm man. Off. It's beautiful. Cause the thing is online can be so much fun, but then sometimes it can just ruin your day. Totally. Totally. Well, what I realize is. Uh, because I'm, <laughs> I, I have a very like, just 
it's almost like an addict personality, right? Like it's just, I become obsessed with things. So if it's like filmmaking, I'm obsessed with filmmaking. If it's like doing dumb skits, like it's extreme. Like I just, I need to do it. It's all I think about, you Mm -hmm. know? And I think with the internet, once I take it away from myself, I fill it with other things. So like I start filling it with like audible or I start filling it with like, uh, like just watching like one TV show, you know, Mm. or just finally making uh, a new EP or working on some art shit. But I feel that there's a, there's a toxicity to Twitter, to social media that if you're on it for too long, no matter who you are, you cannot help but compare yourself. You cannot help but compare yourself. And let let alone that, now you got to deal with people fucking saying dumb shit about you. Mm -hmm. That makes it even worse. It does, man. That sucks. Think about how hard hard it is for kids these days, man. Because, like, we grew up with, like, Bebo than MySpace, but we weren't, like, addicted to it. We didn't have it in our pocket. Now, by the time I got to high school... Like, yes, that was a thing, but, like, I didn't grow up. I wasn't in elementary school on fucking Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, I just think about it with these kids, man. It's got to be so hard for them. Totally. There's a there's a thing I, I had to deal with in England. Uh, I didn't have, what was it? I didn't have a PlayStation. I think it was PlayStation. And my friend had a PlayStation. And he lived, like, a mile away. And he had GTA. And damn, dude, I would walk a mile every fucking day to play GTA. Hell like, yeah. that was the shit. You would, dude. I did the same thing when I was younger, bro. <laughs> I did the same thing. Because you want the goods. I want the goods. You know you know that, that game is awesome, mm-hmm. and you're going to walk a mile for it. Now, see, look, now I sound like an old guy. Like, back in my, back in my day, I used to walk <laughs> 20 miles to school. <laughs> but for real, you know, now you got a phone in your pocket, and it's just like, I mean, fuck, dude. You can literally access anything you want. I know that uh, who just announced now you can edit on your phone or a, an iPad, a, Adobe Premiere. That's like you, sick. You can edit films now on your iPad. That's wild. Yeah. And that's right on us. Like, we could pull that out of the pocket and just start getting straight on it. Like, yeah. do whatever the fuck we want. It's too accessible. I think, I think about it like whenever I was in school, like, if somebody was cool, they were cool for something, right? You know, maybe like, you know, they were a great athlete. Maybe like they were cute or handsome. But like nowadays, it's like how many TikTok followers you got. You know what I mean? That might be like the social ooh, judgment ooh. at a school, man. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. I, I did a talk at my school uh, last year and I I finished the talk. I was talking, you know, I was talking about stuff like career stuff. And one of the kids, one of the first questions asked was how many followers do you have? And I was like, interesting, like, you know, total valid question, but that is their idea of, are you actually successful or not? Mm. And then, uh, one of them is just like, oh, he has a check mark. And it's like, (gasps) oh, wow. It's a check mark. Whoa. Like, that's like the real deal to them. That's crazy, bro. I mean, I remember, uh, I was playing a music festival and this guy walked into my trailer and he just started like making a drink. I was like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? He said, it's cool, bro. I'm on TikTok. No, apparently had like like a couple million followers on TikTok, and I was like, bro, I'm on MySpace. I don't give a fuck. Get out of my trailer. Who the fuck? Like, I got pissed, bro. I was like, get the fuck out of my trailer, dude. He literally like that was like his leading thing. It's cool, dude. I'm big on TikTok. Like, I don't give a fuck. Damn. Get out of my trailer. You're gonna find that on TikTok. He totally pranked you. No, dude. (laughs) No, no, no. He was causing problems at the festival that day, dude. He was doing that to everybody, dude. Dude, that's a great prank to pull, though. That is a good I'm prank. On TikTok. Yeah. yeah, what a fucking dick move. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, man. That's wild. That's that's when we, that's when, all right, like the cyborg shit has gone too far. Like we are not the internet. Like we're still humans and we have our own trailers and our own private space. Yes. But that's interesting. That's interesting. I think if you, it, my dad always used to say, you know, for tattoos, do you become the tattooed guy? When you get the tattoos, like, do you, does your personality change to the, the badass, you know, like, you Ooh. Got, or were you already the badass before you got the tattoos? And he used to say that a lot. Cause I, cause you know, I would toy with the idea of getting tattoos and it kind of makes me think with social media, does your social media account and following make you someone that you're not like, you know, do you start like kind of rolling up to events 
walking in there and being like, I got more followers than all these fuckers in here, mm. you know? Cause if you're doing that, damn, that's sad. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. That, especially if like the internet got taken away, dude, mm. you know what I mean? What you going to do now? Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time. Big that's, time. That shit is crazy. And man. you're the one that has to go home after that. Having not made any friends, having tried to flex on everybody the whole night. And then you just sit there with your fucking digital number. Ooh. Damn, dude. This is deep, dude. That's a burn, man. That's that's bad. But as an artist and as a business, you still pay attention to those numbers, don't you? Those analytics? Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. don't let it get to your fucking but don't head. Don't let it get to your head. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I think the numbers are important because it's gonna allow you to do tours and allow you to get better visuals and you know, get get better time slots. You know, you can you can grow something. Mm-hmm. But you're only growing it because of the fucking number. Like, so the number is people. So you're walking into the event. If you start flexing on the people, it's like, what are you doing, dude? You got this shit all backwards. I think that guy flexing on me was the first time I've dealt with something like that. Wow. Yeah, and it was weird. That is very, weird. It's very weird. Have you ever dealt with that in the EDM scene at all? Like with and with any other artists? I mean, obviously, you don't got a name like in I, this. But. I have this many, like someone just flexing. Yeah. Not like numbers. I'll have like artists like flex on all this stuff they're doing. But if that's what you're doing, flex that shit. You know what I mean? Like mm. talk about it, bro. You got some good shit going Dude, on. Big shit. Talk by the like, way, flex. You you gotta you gotta get to the point where you can smoke cigars in here. Oh, great, dude. You don't you don't know what's in here, do you? Cigars? Box, box ready to smoke one? No. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Oh man. If they, oh man. <laughs> Whiskey glasses. If we could smoke a cigar, that'd be amazing. I don't own the house. Ah, we're not, the day we're not I do, yet. bro, it's on. Get, gotta get the numbers up, man. Yeah, gotta get the numbers <laughs> up, man. <laughs> gotta get the numbers up. I like that tattoo thing your dad says, man, because I just have one slutty tattoo. It's like, was I slutty before the tattoo, or did the tattoo make me slutty? I don't. I was slutty before, but I definitely feel sluttier. What do you think? You think I'm sluttier? Dude. Ah, yeah. see, all right. So you got a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. You got a little bit of both. Yeah. All right. Well, years later, I finally figure out what that uh, what that actually means. <laughs> That's a blend of the two. I love it, though, dude. But um, you mentioned skits, and we did have a fan call in to ask that question. I didn't want to take that from the fan because I was like, that's a good point, but I'll leave mm-hmm. it to them to talk about it. So we did have some fan questions I wanted to get to. Um, before we get to them, Kyle, did you have anything you wanted to ask Mr. Jenga right here? Yeah, sure. Um, what is the most beautiful thing you've experienced or seen in life? Holy cow. I've got this. Talk about deep. Metal Dad. Watching Metal Dad. Metal Dad. Yeah, I talked about this on the podcast last week. It, that will come out tomorrow, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll re-talk about it briefly. So I used to think the most beautiful thing to watch were, was a bro down, like a bro out, just bros there together, and that's all they care about is just broing out together. It's a beautiful thing to watch. People make fun of all the time, but if you watch it like a true and like live and true bro out, you're like, this is fucking beautiful, dude. What? But anyway, I thought that was the most beautiful thing until I saw Metal Dad, dude. I went and saw Godsmack, and it was this dad and his three daughters and a son. Mm. And he's just sitting there just recording them having a blast, just like so stoked. He's a metalhead. You knew he was a metalhead, and he was there with his metalhead wife. You, they just looked like metalheads. They were having the best time. So I loved this guy. He, just having, he was so happy his kids were enjoying it. So I went and bought him a beer, went and talked to him. He is a vet um, in the Army, which I loved already. And But he was like, I met my wife at a uh, Godsmack concert 20 years ago. And uh, they're at a Godsmack concert together with their kids. They named one of their daughters Serenity after Godsmack. And, like, he's just there. It's like a full circle thing, and he has this beautiful family, amazing wife from this band that wouldn't have happened without this band. And, like, I legit was, like, tearing up, bro. I was like, this is the most beautiful fucking story. Just the first thing that comes to mind is Metal Dad, dude. So Metal Dad's win. Metal Dad. Metal Dad. You should make like a limited shirt run. Metal dad. Just metal I'm sure dad. that it's already been, that's already happened. <laughs> but uh, the most Man. beautiful thing, I, I, that, that one's the one that, I, that's the most beautiful thing I can, uh, that was of late that I'm sticking with. What about you? Wow. Wow. That's a tough one, man. There's it's, a lot of beautiful shit in this life. a lot of beautiful things. There, there was, uh, it's, it's between my mom coming out to Vegas, honestly, you know, because that was, that was amazing. It really was. And, uh, and this one time, that I finally got back to my school bus when COVID hit. I had one lung because uh, the other one was all 
cut up and healing from surgery. And I was driving across the States, pulling into the lot with my school bus. And I got there after like four days, didn't get arrested because I was driving an unregistered, no, no license, no the truck. I mean, the truck was completely unregistered. License plate, uh, there was a license plate on it. My license was suspended. And uh, yeah, it just would have been terrible if I got pulled over. So honestly, that was one of the best experiences of my entire fucking life was pulling into my my little lot with my school bus because I just felt safe. And I was <laughs> like, all right, four days of not getting arrested. I think we're we're chilling now. We could finally go on a little kayak on the river and just chill. Fuck yeah, yeah dude. It was good. Bus and metal dad. I love it. Yeah. Thank you guys. That's what I love that. That's what we think are the most beautiful things. That's just, it's just like, cause it's, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, it's objective. It totally. is, man. I'm telling you, if you get a chance to watch a metal dad, dude, with his kids, dude, <laughs> I fucking highly recommend it. Go talk to the guy. He's going to have a cool story. Wow. Dude. I'm, I'm going to metal shows now, like old metal bands, like shows now, just so I can just meet another metal dad, dude. That was, it was so cool. I was like, I want what you guys have. This is beautiful. Fuck yeah. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. I love how hyped you were on. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was, bro. That that was the show was incredible, but that story made made the fucking night for me. That's awesome. All right. I'm gonna keep it rolling here. All right. Yo, Taboo, what's up, man? This is Big Kurt from Tampa. What up, Kurt? Yo, I got a question for, for my guy over here, Jenga. Um, if you could make one flip to any childhood show, cartoon, <laughs> Something you throw in a set, what would it be? It's like remix a cartoon, like flip, like sample it and flip, flip it. Yeah, I guess like sample a cartoon. Damn, I don't know. First, I'm going Johnny Bravo just I, to piss everybody off. Johnny Bravo is all right. <laughs> like, hey, give me that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man, I don't know. I was obsessed with Dexter's Lab, dude. Yes, and dude. You know what? All right, actually, perfect answer is uh, Powder Puff Girls. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one, yeah. Because that intro is so damn good. Was it like the secret X? It's Chemical it, X? It is the most badass DMB tune. Like, you got to hear this thing. If you guys haven't heard it in a while, it's like really fucking good. Mm. Like, I'd flip the shit out of that. I'd, I'd actually play it at a show the way it is right now. Dude, I, uh, I flipped. I never released it. I just did it one day. I was making a lot of lo-fi beats, and I made a lo-fi beats out of the Japanese version of Dragon Ball GT's intro. Because I'm a big Ooh, Dragon Ball fan, but I yeah. thought that Japanese Dragon Ball GT song was the best song out of all the Dragon Ball series. Oh, damn. Dragon, it's, Dragon. No, no, that's the American one. Oh, gosh. Gotcha, that's the American gotcha, one. The gotcha. Japanese one was way more, like, uplifting and, and like, the the melody and it's just beautiful. I don't know if I heard the Japanese one. Da, 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 da. I can uh, turn our mics down and play the Powerpuff Girls theme. Yeah. So, so we don't get a uh, copyright. Yeah, so don't get flagged. Definitely yeah. play that. All right, I'm going to turn it down real quick and I'll play this. Ah. Oh. You got to put in the drum and bass one. I can't, dude. I'll get flagged. Damn. Damn. Until I get the Spotify deal one day, huh? It's badass. <laughs> oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. Just got to keep the hard work up. But, Damn. When's Joe uh, Rogan going to bring you on, man? <laughs> Imagine that. That'd That's, be nuts, that dude. That would be fucking cool. That'd be fucking nuts. It's a matter of time. You think so? It's a matter of time. Yeah, you guys, man, you guys would have a great chat. I'd reckon so. You guys would have a great chat. I'd most reckon. definitely. Talking Same about hunting and hunting. like just being out there in the wilderness. Uh, I, I could see I could see Joe right now, just like, ooh, oh yeah. When you see that elk way off in the distance, and you'll just be like, yeah, oh yeah, a bear, a bear, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, damn, that would be cool though. But um, hell yeah, I like it. So you're going, you're going Powderpuff Girls. I'm gonna go. Like I said, I'm gonna go with DBZ Dragon Ball GT's Japanese version mm. theme song. It's a good one. All catchy, right. catchy. All right. I love like anime music. You know I, what never, I, mean? I never got into anime. So I got like super into like listening to lo-fi anime, like Japanese anime beats. Because it was just like the theme songs of like anime. They were always like so happy and like uplifting and like, it was like electronic music too. You know what I mean? And so, uh, I don't know. I just really got into those for a while. Wow. Super fun. No, I, n I never got into them. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think, uh, I think I just had my favorites. But also I think moving overseas kind of hindered that for me because I came back and I didn't understand a lot of the shows people were talking about because I mean the UK had 
totally different shit. The baking channel or something. Totally different stuff. Sky News and, you know, Kerrang. Kerrang was big. I mean, Kerrang, I watch every freaking day. That was like, that was the shit. Mm. Do you know Kerrang? No. Damn. That was like the MTV in the UK. Yeah. Big time. Uh, Foo Fighters were like number one for like literally almost, uh, I think, a year or over two years. I got news for you, buddy. I'm pretty sure they were in the United States, the greatest country of all time. Were they? Yeah, dude. (laughs) Pretty sure. (laughs) Were they? There goes my hero. All right. (laughs) Let's get to another one, Kyle. All right. What's up, Taboo? What's up, Jenga? This is Chris calling out from West Virginia. Hello, Chris. Not Virginia. You know, the western part of it, the whole different state shit. Uh, big time fan of both of you guys. Hang on. Um, I have a general question for both of you guys. If you had to give up one of your devices, which, like, for good, you couldn't do it anymore. You know, if you didn't have any intention of quitting it, but you just had to give it up for good, what would it be? Like, for a couple of my vices, it would be caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. Vices. I one of those for good, and I wasn't actually intentionally trying to. It would have to probably be caffeine for me. Uh, so, yeah, I was just curious about that. I love what you guys are doing with the scene and with your music. I uh, can't wait to see both of you guys in the near future. Peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's choppy, but but the, we got the question. If That's we had to give up question. a vice... <clears throat> I mean, you gave you've been giving up, you know, foods and stuff. I gave up porn. Mm. I'm like a year off porn. I had one slip up one night, but mm. I was drunk, so I don't count. That's a good excuse. Yeah, it's a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> drunk and horny. Man, I, I yeah, I I think I've already given up quite a lot. What's something else you'd like? To, I wish I. I mean, I want to say I wish I could give up something because if I needed to give up something, if I really want to do it, I could fucking do it. I could do it tomorrow. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I, I think like, don't, you got to ask yourself why you're giving it up though. Cause like the only reason I gave stuff up is cause my life is like exponentially better. Mm. Like I drank way too much. Like mm. when I used to drink, it's so like, I don't drink anymore. Cause I would just drink too much. Like I could not like, it was either like zero or 100. I can't just have a drink. I'm just going to be like fucking wrecked. Really? Oh just, yeah. You, how old were you? Uh, from when I started drinking, I was like, whenever you were like, this is out of hand. Oh man. I was 20. Uh, 28 when I okay, started I was gonna drinking. Say, if you're going to say 21, I'm like, dude, you were just young and didn't know anything. No, no, like, no. You no, were an no, adult, no. dude. No, no, no. I was a straight adult. You knew, you knew what was going on. No, I knew exactly what was going on. But yeah, so I, I'd say if I had to give up something now, I don't know what the fuck. If I stop eating meat, I'm just going to die. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about things I could give up that'd make me better off, better off overall. A, nicotine. But like I've quit nicotine before a couple times. And I was off it for years, and then I just got back on it because it I was drinking and it felt better smoking what I was drinking. Oh, the thing man. is, I know I can quit. I just have to get to that point. I'm not at that point, you know. And every time I every time I've quit, it's because I had at the point where I was like, I'm done with this shit, mm. and I just hadn't got there. But I'm trying to think of something else I could give up that overall benefit me. A vice. You wouldn't consider masturbating. Drinking? Really. Yeah, I enjoy drinking. It's not a pro- it's never been a problem for me. Mm. I don't not irresponsible with it. You know what I mean? I'm not getting hammered. I can have like two beers and be straight. Right. You know what right. I mean? And I, I I like that. Like after a long day, a nice beer, I'd rather give up masturbating. <laughs> 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 but you know, that would be hard, bro. If you, like if I don't jerk it, the thing is I have a girlfriend, so like, you know, I don't have to do that as much. But if I was like a single man and I didn't masturbate, dude, I'd have I'd come in my sleep, dude. Mm. I would straight nut in my on my blanket. I have a buddy who has uh, regular wet dreams because he doesn't touch himself. Yep, dude. I mean, I remember on the balance wow. tour, dude. I mean, we we're on the balance tour for a month. We we're on that bus for a month. Couldn't see nobody, and I'm on a bus, so I can't jerk it, dude. I remember I woke up about to bust. You know what I mean? Just like. In the middle of the night, we hit like a bump, and I was already erect, just like it rubbing against. <laughs> dude, I woke up like, ha! Ah! A couple different times. It wasn't just one night, dude. I was about to bust. Holy shit. Yeah, I have a fucking demon inside of me. You got to let it out every now and then. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think giving up porn is a is a good one. You watch sure. porn? No, I, uh, I kind of stopped everything almost at the same time. Do like, you masturbate? No. Whoa. I really, I really try hard not to. It's a tough. You try one. hard not to. No, but I, I, I have been since I was in, I mean, I went through a whole change a few years ago, but like 
it must have been like three years ago now. It was like, okay, I'm just going to reform myself, completely reform myself. Uh, so I like sometimes when I look at videos of myself before three years ago. It looks like a completely different person. Mm. But yeah, you look great, man. Thanks, man. No, I appreciate that. But um, but yeah, a lot of it comes with like discipline because I realize that when I choose discipline for myself, I just feel way fucking better and I feel way more free. Like that's honestly, man. If you're jerking off every night, you wake up. If, look, if I was jerking off, drinking eating sugar, processed foods, all this shit, not sleeping, making music till four in the morning. I mean, I did that for most of my life, you know, when I was younger. You go through waves of, like, different shit you're on if you want to drink more, drink less, you know, if you're trying to, like, not drink as much coffee, whatever, you know. But eventually, when I was, like, 28, I'm just like, dude, fuck this, man. Actually, I talked to Sammy, LS Dream, and we were at uh, Camp Bisco, and it was one of the most impactful conversations I had before I went through, like, my metamorphosis almost which was he didn't drink and we were talking for like two hours and we went to go to a little bar to get a drink well for me and I got this drink and I remember saying something like you know I think I drink too much sometimes but I'm just gonna get this drink anyways you know because fuck it but I, I might I might like stop drinking eventually and he just said nah don't do that and I was like what do you mean? He's like, don't stop drinking. I was like, but you don't drink. Like that didn't make sense to me when he said that. Cause you know, you, you always expect somebody who doesn't drink to kind of push it on you. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you should join me. You shouldn't drink either. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, nah, don't do that. And he explained that when you have to do something out of straight willpower, you know, like force yourself to not do something, all you do is want it more. So you have to learn that you just don't want it. Like for real, like, Maybe you just like wake up too many times, like super hungover, and you're just like, fuck this. Like, finally, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. And that was something that stuck with me. And eventually, I was just like, yeah, I think I'm just going to not drink and just see how that goes for like a week. And then the week was up. And I was like, dude, I got more music done than I ever have in like the last few months, just in that one week alone. And then just turned into a month, then turned into a few months. So it's not like willpower or anything. I feel more free than I've ever felt in my fucking life. Mm. I don't feel like, like, I don't feel like every time I walk into a venue, I feel like temptation of like, oh man, there's like tequila over there. Is that like, I could just chill. It's fucking awesome. Let me ask you this. Was there a breaking point for you or was it just like, I want to try something Absolute new? fucking breaking point. What was the breaking point for you? I lost my dad mm -hmm. and he was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. is, that how then, you, is that how you lost him? Yeah. Damn. And then, and then, and then like a few months later, I almost died. And then I ended up in the hospital and the, it was crazy because I did these like two back-to-back -back surgeries. Had nothing to do with drinking. Had nothing to do with being irresponsible. It was just like this freak thing where my lung collapsed. And then my second surgery, I'm in the ER and this doctor comes in. And it was 2 in the morning in like uh, Indiana or something. I don't even know where the hell I was. I was driving across the states. That's all I know. And this, this doctor comes in, it's two in the morning and he just did the x-ray and he's just like, this x-ray is really weird. We got to get you into a CAT scan, like stat. And I was like, okay, that's, that's weird. And so we did the CAT scan and then it was, I was sitting in the ER. He comes in like 30 minutes later and he's telling me, he's like, I just got the phone with four doctors. And I'm like, four doctors? What the fuck? Oh, fuck. It's, you sound fucked. Dude, I'd be terrified. I, it was really weird. I just knew something weird was happening and so I'm sitting there. And uh, he's just like, yeah, you know, uh, it's got phone with four doctors, and uh, we think that you might die at any moment. Whoa. And I'm just sitting there like, for real? <laughs> also, I'm like, why would you tell me that? Like, Yeah, good joke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're pulling my leg. I, Don't I, you piss on my dick and tell me it's raining. I was hoping it was either going to be a joke or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a worst joke of all time. I'm like, just imagining a doctor who's just like low key a comedian. You're gonna comedian. die in about 35 minutes. <laughs> I'm just joking. We have fun here. <laughs> I'm Dr. Harris. You know what I mean? <laughs> we joke around here. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, no, it, and. It wasn't. I was like, oh, th that's that's crazy. In my mind, I'm like, look, if I'm going to die, just like, you know, don't tell me. Like, I'd rather just go without you, like, freaking me out. Yeah. Uh, but he told me because he was like, you can't burp, you can't cough, you can't sneeze because it could rupture your lung and, like, 
just throw you into cardiac arrest because like there's this big bleb that they saw on the uh, MRI, which they were like, holy shit, this thing could just collapse at any moment. And uh, that that was like the moment where I I I've, I thought to myself, okay, I'm like 28 years old, and I want to live the most badass life I can. Like I just want to do everything that's in my head. I actually want to do those things for real, because I just I was always dreaming those things. You know, I I was always dreaming of touring. I was always dreaming of putting out a lot of music, and I was always dreaming of being somebody that my mom could be proud of. Mm. And I realized that I wasn't doing any of that. And I just always felt I was working hard at doing it. But, and I, I was, I was working as hard as I could with the vices around my ankles. So I was just like, fuck all this dude. Like, I'm not doing this fucking shit anymore. I'm like, I'm just literally going to do this for real now. Like, and that, that was it. I just made the decision. And I said, I'm, I'm just going to be as like, healthy as I can be to do these things for my family, for myself and to build something that I think a lot of people can be proud of too, you know? And that's, that can be as small as like these barbecues and shit, you know, like whatever it is we're doing. Fuck bro. That's inspiring as shit. <laughs> that is man. It's inspiring yeah. as hell, dude. Like you, you know, you, yeah. Like anybody who's listening to this right now is probably listening to this going, fuck yeah. Cause I know I am dude. That's awesome. That's kick ass brother. Yeah. Hell of a story. Yeah, I don't talk about it very often. Obviously, I'm talking about it here, so I guess that's a lot of other people that are hearing about it. Yeah. But, you, but usually I won't. At like, least two people are going to hear it. At least, at least two people. <laughs> at yeah. least two. At least two. And that's just me and Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, man, that's fucking... All right, let me ask you this, and this is also like a deep on this. Are you... Re- do you... Are you a religious guy or spiritual guy? And do you see something like that as like a sign from a, like God or something like that? Like, does that something like that ever like wake in, like make you question, like, is someone helping me here? Oh, I believe in God my entire life for sure. And I grew up Christian. I walked away from it a while. I'm Christian now. Was that, was that what brought you back? Was that a sign from God to you? There's a, there's a natural order to the universe. You know, it's a, it's natural law, you know, the way things, there's an ebb and flow and, you know, when you go against that ebb and flow, you just realize that <laughs> things get fucked up. Yeah. And I was going against the ebb and flow for a long time. Like, you know, when I when I give into like things that I want, just me, you know, like just something that's gonna like give me a dopamine rush or it's gonna get me fucked up, or like, you know, me just trying to do something out of not being authentic, I realize that it's not the way of the universe. And the, the natural law is what I try to abide by now, which is if that's the way the universe works, that's the way that I want to work. So like, you know, a flower cannot lie to the sun. The sun cannot lie to a flower. Like there's an exchange though of energy. The sun gives the flower energy and the, the flower accepts it. So if I go around lying to people all the time, you know, I'm doing something that the universe isn't capable of doing. You know, if the universe was just to start lying and like the whole fucking order, the whole way it's constructed would just fall apart immediately. There's a synchronicity to everything. Are you sure you don't do drugs? (laughs) 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 I I, I have a few times. (laughs) (laughs) Good city though. I just, I had a strike. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, to me, like what this is like, you know, like obviously, um, you know, we have like, you know, our physical bodies and we have like these very physical lives and we want to buy things and, you know, uh, we are all materialistic to uh, a degree. It's just to what degree is that? And I just want to find a a nice middle ground that works for me where Mm. it feels like I don't, I don't need more than I feel actually need for real like i got a roof over my head i got food i could play music i can make friends and i could travel and i could play fucking shows and you know crowd surf occasionally like that's fucking awesome man like yeah. all that shit is just like right exactly what i need and if god put that in my hands like look you can have this i just don't want to fuck it up like you mm-hmm. know it's every time i do something that is just for myself or at least from what i learned from when i'm younger it just fucks everything up. Like either I'm not happy or it makes somebody else not happy. Mm. So I just don't want to do that anymore. You know, like yeah. I, I'd rather just be like, 
an authentic fucking guy. And if, if that means that someone doesn't like me because of like my beliefs or because I say something that maybe they don't agree with, that's okay. That's totally okay. Because that's the way the universe works. You know, it's like, it's all right. You don't got to please everybody, but you can at least be yourself at the end of the day. And you can always know that no matter what you did, you were yourself. Amen to that, bro. Yeah, I man. fuck. That's why I fuck with you, dude. I swear to God, that's why I fuck with you, dog. And same with you, though. Same with you. I think, I, I swear, dude, I think that's, if you're just yourself, it just works, man. Mm-hmm. People fuck with you. I have, um, I have like DJ buddies. Um, I was talking to one of them the other day and he was like, yeah, we're about to do a rebrand. You know, I've been talking to these rebranding consultants in LA and I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, and I was like, whatever you do, bro, just make sure it's you. I was like, don't fucking put out. I was like, there's a million people out there, but nobody's you. You know what I mean? Just be whatever you it is you're about to put out there as this is what it is. I'm like, just be yourself with it, bro. Mm. And like, he was like, damn. And he sat there and thought on it. And that's like the most true thing. Like, you know, I, I put myself out there as myself and you know, the results came, the results came. And I was just like, if I was trying to be somebody, I don't know if that would have happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Like what if you, what if you do the rebrand, right? And you become really successful. Now that's one scenario, right? Yeah, look at Marshmallow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that worked really well. Worked really well, dude. But then you look at like LS Dream, and that's really him. Oh, he really dude, yeah. be about that spiritual shit. You know what I mean? Like totally. on that, like on that hippy dippy shit. He really be that. He he really be like that. Totally. Yeah. 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 And it's it's. I think it's contagious. Yes. Like that. That's that level of authenticity mm-hmm. and being able to be vulnerable, like. Dude, I, I think it's hard to be vulnerable. Mm. It's fucking hard. I like, feel like I can be vulnerable around you. I mean, we could turn the mics off. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the three of us. <laughs> and everybody else listening. <laughs> yeah. But that level is it, it it's challenging, I think. For for a younger for a younger person, I think it might be challenging because maybe I don't know, I can only speak for myself, but you're leaving high school, you're still dealing with like a lot of that kind of like really close knit community stuff and a weird hierarchy that's been built in, you know, the school and who's in what type of group. There's a, there's a level of vulnerability that at least I built in my life where I started putting up these walls of like, okay, I'm going to be, I mean, even with music, I remember I got like pigeonholed as like the metal dude. Like I was like the rock and roll guy, but everybody liked me. I mean, it's, it's not like anybody disliked me. It's just that I remember listening to electronic music and being like, I love that. Like, it, and it was some like really basic like trance, you know, it wasn't like any like weird wompy stuff. It was like the most like uplifting like trance. I was like, I, I really fucking love that. And immediately I corrected myself. I'm like, no, nah, but I'm the metal guy. Mm. You know? Like I need to be this guy. Like I'm the dude that wears the Iron Maiden shirt or like I'm the dude that like listens to Ozzy. Yeah. You weren't being yourself. Right, yeah. right. So it takes like a while. You're putting on a front, dude. Totally. Yeah, I was doing that. I was in the same shit whenever I first started out, dude. I was like, oh, all these DJs, they they wear all black and their branding's hard and they act hard and they play hard music. So that was me in the beginning, bro. Damn, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. Fuck. Yeah. I want to see that version of Taboo. <laughs> I don't, dude. He's dead. <laughs> Damn, yo, because we did the same shit. Yeah, man, we did. We did the same shit. And I got boring. I just didn't feel right. Wow. Yeah, it didn't feel right. I never knew that. Mm-hmm. I got to dig into like your older stuff then. Have fun. I mean, it was all, I was always silly. Like right. it was always goofy and it was always funny. Right. But it just, there was that, that, that disconnect where it wasn't fully me. Right. You know? And now you're wearing all like bright orange and shit. Yeah. Now I'm super happy, dude. I can, you know, I'm, I'm like, this is me, bro. If I can love me or hate me. This is a, this is I. Wow. And I stand alone. I'm just so listening to God smack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's fucking awesome, man. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I hope more kids can do it when they're younger. Yeah. Well, it's really, I feel like when you're younger, it's hard to find yourself. You know what You're talking about like in high school, like we don't know who the fuck you are in high school. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you might, you like you might can feel it. You know what I mean? But you don't know, bro. I don't feel like you actually know who you are until you go out there and, really find yourself. I know that sounds fucking lame to say, but like, it's true. Mm. Totally. It takes experience. Yeah. Yeah. It takes, I think it takes fucking up and failing as someone that you're not. Yes. To realize, wow. So I can fail even if I'm not myself. Mm. 
So I might as well just be myself. I might as well fail being myself. <laughs> yeah, because then at the end of the day, at least you have dignity and you, yeah, and you go to pride, sleep. Yeah, you dude. Integrity. Totally. Yeah. Go to sleep being like, all right, that's cool. I fail being myself. Got to go to sleep being like, I try to be somebody else and failed at it. That mm. sucks. Yeah. That fucking sucks. It does. But hey, that was a good question. I love, I, love, great, I love how it got us into it, dude. Great question. It started a wonderful dialogue. Yeah, it was mm. beautiful. We got, I, I, I think forgot. we got one more. Yeah, I forgot that was a question. Well, I mean, we just took it and ran with it, and that's what I love about these. Mm. You never know. All right, last one, fellas. Hey, what's up, Taboo, Jenga? This is Matt J. from Denver. Uh, Jenga, I've been listening to your stuff for a while now, but uh, really caught on to following you on the gram, given your skits. They're great. So I got to ask, how... How much effort, what's the process that goes into um, writing, filming, putting those clips together? And then Taboo, given your uh, comedy background, are we ever going to see a Jenga Taboo uh, collab skit? All right, that's all. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I hope I get you on one of Dude, these. Dude, what we should do, bro, is we should go to the medical tent at a festival and literally do the exact thing that we just said with the doctors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we should do that exact fucking thing, dude. <laughs> Where we just give him horrible news. It's like a dude. He's like, you're pregnant, dog. <laughs> And they're like tripping. They're like, what? Oh, dude. Oh, oh man. That sounds like a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dr. Harrison here. We have, we have fun around here. We have fun. You're fine. You're fine. You just need some water. You know. <laughs> oh, man. That would be f- fucking. Sketches are fun, so man. Funny. Like, I did the one, the Mosh Pit mic, and it was fun because it was all like improv comedy. Now, whenever you're doing your sketches, are you writing stuff down or is there a lot of improv going on? It has to be written down because mm. because there's uh, like four characters. Oh, uh, okay. So it has to be because they talk to each other. Okay. I was thinking of like the ones where you're like the police, you're like the police in one of them or whatever, security. No, nah, those are different. I mean, like uh, to answer uh, Matt's question, I think yes, it's Matt. Yes, Matt, yeah. Uh, yeah, there, it's. It's pretty. It's written out for the the Jenga band. So like when everybody's talking to each other, uh, and Sue Jenga walks in, that's that's written out. And like that process takes maybe three hours from like when I think of it to shoot it to finish it. Uh, sometimes four hours. And um, to be honest, I don't put too much thought into it. I don't I don't like schedule them or anything. I just kind of make one whenever I I feel like making one. For now, the other stuff, kind of like your mosh pit, Mike. That was like. Uh, that feels a little bit more free flow, kind of like the other ones that I'm doing in the in the wild when I'm like a security guard at a festival. Yeah, I ended up kissing two girls because I told them I wouldn't fuck them up in the pit. <laughs> 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 I said, if you don't, if I if I make you a promise to not fuck you up later, will you give will y'all kiss me? And they kiss me. Wow, <laughs> Mosh Pit Mike's a legend, dude. He died though. He died in the pit. Oh man, but you know what? Yeah, <laughs> he might resurrect. Yeah, he died doing what he loved. Yeah, exactly. That's all I mean. I love doing like those. Like I have like I I have a lot of sketch comedies written. Um, like I've that's been something I've really wanted to do. I just you know you have a big video like uh film background. You yeah. know what I mean. The only editing I've ever done is just like for YouTube. You know what I mean. So I'm not saying that's like holding me back, but I always just feel like ah man, and maybe if I just had someone that knew what they were doing or whatever, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But I have like hella sketch comedies written. And like, I'd love to do more of those improv stuff. Are you like, are you like constantly writing? Well, you even said you're like, it's not something like you just let it come to you, but yeah, I'll usually write it in my notepad, Mm -hmm. like on my phone. Same. And, uh, I, I keep, I keep like a whole artillery of them. So like, you know, if I'm like, oh shit, I haven't posted anything in a while. I'm like, all right, I'll just go like film one of these things real quick. Like Mm -hmm. I have one that I want to do about Starbucks. Um, cause they have like the tip option now on like the little pad (laughs) and like, the tip that you give is like, you know, not easy if they're like literally staring at you while you're like deciding on like what the tip is. I thought that'd just be fucking hilarious because Sue Jenga is like mad frugal with everything, mm. but he's also not trying to be an asshole. So it'd just be a funny skit. And I think of that when I'm in the shower and I'm like, okay, cool. I got my green screen. I went to Starbucks. I took the photos for the backgrounds and shit. You're not you even know. buying coffee. You're in Starbucks taking pictures. I mean, I always get my tea, <laughs> but but I'll take I'll take photos for the plates, you know, mm. to put behind me as like you know do the green screen stuff. Or like mm-hmm. when I'm on the plane, I get really scared because uh, 
I've been scared of flying for like for some reason. I've been flying my whole fucking life. That's a vice you got to give up, dog. Uh, dude, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Your fear of heights or planes. I don't know what it is. Yeah, something in the last year got me. But you should get into it. I mean, like once you like learn editing in a premiere is like pretty similar to like the workflow with music. I, yeah, I know. I was like, I learned Ableton. I could fucking learn how to do this. It's pretty damn similar. Yeah. Like instead of doing... Like, even the fades are similar. Mm -hmm. Like, fading clips and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just fading the same way. It's a linear linear style of editing. Yeah, I could figure it out, dude. I have this one I've been wanting to do. Actually, I'm not going to tell it on here. I'm not going to do that. You, you know what? If there's one thing I notice whenever I try to explain a, a skit. I always get, like, a deadpan look. They're just like, okay. And then I film it, and I put it out, and... It, the reaction's explosive. They're just mm. like, that's the funniest fucking thing you've ever done. I'm like, man, maybe I'm just bad at explaining them. All right, bet. So you ever watch the show? You ever watch the show alone? Yeah, yeah. All right, I want to make a fucking sketch comedy. It's alone, but it's with dubstep DJs. Oh, and it's like, genius. And I'm, just, genius. and I'm like impersonating like Liquid Stranger. I'm going to be oh. excision on one of them, dude. <laughs> okay, you know that's good. Mosh that's, Pit Mike might even make appearance, dude. That's that's so fucking funny. He's just dying because Django no can kiss. be taboo. Taboo can be Django. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I I I could definitely, if I if I was in one of them for sure, I feel like. I don't know. We could do one. That is a lone a lone survivor type style. But you could be all the characters and do it the same way I do it. And then it's a lot easier for you to piece that story together because you're the one that's acting. Mm. But I will fucking gladly be in some shit like Let's that. Go, I dude. love acting. Dude. Let's go, like, dude. I, if you I, give me a character, I'm in. I just, I'm just a slut, dude. So I just like being on camera. <laughs> I, I like it too. Yeah. I like it too. There's something something fun about it. It's yeah, just like it's, it's so you're, you're creating a world. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Dude. Yeah. I love I love, dude, I mean like I was like I've always been editing videos. Like I remember when I was a kid, bro. Like I used to be just obsessed with YouTube and like try to start my own YouTube channel. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but I was always just obsessed with it. Never got good at it. But totally. Well yeah. you ended up doing it, just I'm like in a slightly it. different medium. Yeah. Like absolutely. Just, now you're just touring playing shows instead. Yeah, dude. That's pretty fucking cool. Let's go. What 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 was the question? Oh, that was the question. I was like, "Well, did we go off topic again?" <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, now the sketches are fun. fun, dude. Yeah, all the characters in one scene looks like a fucking bitch to edit. Dude, the the old man skit. I don't know if you saw this one I did, I did. recently. Mm -hmm. That one was probably one of the most nerve wracking ones I've ever done. Really? Because you're just in there, fucking. You're in character, dude. It's not you. It seems like you're watching it. It's mad funny, but like I'm literally walking into a food court, like dressed as an old guy, and I have to interrupt everybody eating to play them a fucking EDM song. Did you get kicked out, or did they know it was? They about to tried happen? to kick us out in the middle of shooting, and really? we didn't get it on on camera. But the guy was actually kind of cool. He was pissed, but he was kind of cool. He like walked over and he's just like, "You guys finish whatever you're doing and get out of here." And I was like, you're like, there's no way to talk to your elders. Well, he said it to the camera guy, uh, Victor. And uh, Victor's the man. He fucking, he comes with me on these journeys to shoot these things. Should be like, this is my grandpa. This is, this is, this is, listen, make a wish. Wouldn't let him have this. <laughs> make him feel like real bad <laughs> yeah. about it. Make a wish. Wouldn't let him have this. So this is his make a wish. And you're going to take that from him. Oh, spin it right What is this business you guys have? Do you guys not care about the elders? And then you canceled them on Twitter. And then you. Cancel them on Twitter. Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. Well, you you would you would shut up real quick. <laughs> yeah. You would shut up real quick. I'm sorry, guys. Can I get you anything else? Is, but is, man, you have everything you need. I, I'll tell you what, though, it is it is nerve wracking doing that. Like that's hard. Like I I hope they don't catch on that much that I have to keep doing them because like if they catch on, I can't help it. I'm like ah, oh, I gotta keep doing. See, this. I like the like the whenever I was doing mosh pit mic and I'm just walking up like just being like. It's just one guy. I was just talking shit, like you know, asking them who they liked it, who were there, who were they were there to see, and if it was like on some pussy shit, I'd like call them a bunch of pussies. And ah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun. <laughs> I had a blast with it, dude. I had a blast. That's with it, fun. That's I, fun. You know, I enjoy like I don't know, dude. I like embarrassing myself a lot of times in public, dude. <laughs> It's fun. Man, the food court was intimidating. See, I'll do it as a security guard. I love fucking with people. Like, Dude. telling them they can't wear, like, socks with sandals and shit. But, like, th the food court, thats that one got me. Because I didn't even know what I was doing. I, had, <laughs> I, I didn't even know what the, the final product was. I was just like, I don't know. Because uh, we did all this fucking makeup. And I'm like, I have to do something with this. Because, like, we literally have no plan. I'm just like, ah, oh, fucking hell. I Dude, don't know. I'll just interrupt this We should court. start a series playing dubstep in inappropriate places. Like a children's daycare center? Yeah, like a children's hospital. 
Oh, that's <laughs> you know inappropriate, but funny. Um, the kids would love it. Like a bingo, like this, like old people playing bingo. Do, dude, those would pop. Yeah, they would pop. People love that stuff. It's it's just it's fucking ridiculous. And who is psycho enough to do that? There you go. That's why it's awesome. <laughs> it's fun, dude. There's something about watching the reactions of people. A well, funeral. No, nah, that. Oh, all right, that's all you. That's all you. <laughs> Inappropriate, dude. That is all you. Holy shit. Holy shit. All my fucking headbangers. <laughs> oh, man. Break your fucking neck. You, even a someone, wedding who, someone who broke their neck yeah. on a motorcycle accident. <laughs> oh. oh. All right, now it's just getting dark. <laughs> But it's still kind of funny. But yes, I'm I am I'm down to put it in ridiculous. I almost uh, did a library or something, you know, like just trying to think of like dumb places to do mm-hmm. that shit. Or, oh man, I got so many ideas. I'm not gonna even go on. Yeah, that. probably not. I got so many ideas. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been awesome. <laughs> Fucking awesome. This has been great, dude. I'm glad I finally got to see your place. Yeah, man. I'm glad to have you over, brother. Um, you know. You and I did this podcast like probably like three years ago now. No, through Zoom. Yeah, that was three fucking years ago. Kyle, can you look up when the uh, talks with Taboo with Jenga came out? I mean, it was one of the first. I mean, it probably it had to been like one of the first fifty episodes. Wow, how many episodes have you done? Mm, I think we're like at one fifty now, or close, damn near. I think this actually is the hundred fiftieth episode. I could be wrong. Wow, could be wrong. Wow. I don't know that off the top of my head. I just know we're getting close. Damn, so close. But yeah, it, it's been almost three years. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. so much has happened with you. Yeah, it seems like there's been a lot of growth between the both of us. Mm-hmm. I think the scene is growing a lot too. I think that has a lot to do with it. And we're getting older, getting you know, we're getting learnt out here, you know, getting wise, getting learnt. But uh, man, it's just good to um, you know, every time I see you, it's all love, you know. Absolutely. Every, every time I see you, it's every, always great. I'm I'm always blown away that you'll show up to like. The shows are like the secret parties. Like I, I, I fucking love it, but I know how busy you are, well, dude. So. But I fucks with you, dog. Like, I love I it. Love though. You, dog. I love it. And everybody's always whispering to me, like, it's just, oh, "Oh, it's taboo." Shut the fuck up. I'm like, "Yeah, it's taboo." <gasps> <Who> invited him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a back door here? You just walked in. I gotta get out. Hey, uh, can you kick out this uh, piece of shit? <laughs> Somebody online said he was a bigot, so I'm uncomfortable. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, fuck that shit, man. Yeah, dude, but no, it's all love, baby. And, uh, you know, it's good to, it's good to, I'm glad, I'm, dude, this conversation was awesome, bro. I know, Inspi- the last insp- one was cool, too. Inspiring as shit. Yeah. You know, super really fucking cool inspiring. Too. And, uh, I mean, every time I talk with you, it's always inspiring and just, like, always just easy. You know, yeah. it's never forced. It's just always great. Definitely. And, yeah. uh, and I appreciate you coming on the show today, man. Same here, brother. Um, Anything you want to let the people know before you get out of here? Nah, not really. Cool. Just come to your show. Yeah. <laughs> Pussies. <laughs> it was uh, two years ago. I was looking for a specific date, uh, but I, I can't find one. It's just saying two years ago. Wow. Thanks, Obama. Um, anyway, <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Thank you again. Much love, man. I appreciate you, Carl. Yeah, you too, brother. And I appreciate, appreciate everybody listening to this week's episode of Talks with Taboo. I'll see y'all next week. Peace. Much love, guys. See you.